Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2, The Warden and the Paunch, where we are about to uh, probably get murdered. We're, I, I think there's a good chance we're going to lose this army. Uh, we're going to have a tough time with this force against seven units of Empire Knights, I think. They don't have very good uh, infantry. The war wagons have proven to be an issue for us in the past, and against war wagons, I think we really want... Um, we really want boar boy biggins, right? We have fast-moving anti-large troops, uh, but this army doesn't have any. So I think we're gonna we're gonna be very reliant on our biggins here. They are supposedly quite strong against uh, quite strong against large, right? We have an eight-point bonus versus large, so fifty-three attack and sixty-seven damage. It's not nothing, but we're pretty outnumbered. I mean, maybe if we can use the goblins to break the charges. These these are charge troops, right? Yeah, they have 48 charge bonus, but only 27 natural attack. So, you know what? If we can absorb the charges intelligently and then get our biggins in there to actually fight them, maybe this isn't going to be quite as bad as I think. Um, if we lose this, it's not a big deal. This army is not, like, mission critical. If we lose this army, we do lose the ability to pressure the southern parts of this extension of Reichland, so, like, we won't be able to sweep in behind uh, behind their armies and take Castle Dragonhof. We'll have to just advance with the, nor the, northern arm uh, the northern armies and push the front forward, which is fine. It's a little bit of a slower strategy, but, it, it, but it's fine. As long as we successfully prevent uh, these guys from winning the battle by so much that they are uh, able to threaten Carrot Cadron afterward, losing is not a big deal here. So I think we're gonna play really far back because I think we do want to uh, we do want to let our reinforcements come in and we probably want to fight in the trees as much as possible. Uh, the trees are most large units don't move very well in trees and I believe it is the case that I I think trees interfere with charges. Like I think you you technically aren't charging or there there's some way in which horse units moving in trees don't always get to use their charge bonus and I wish I knew more precisely how that worked for y'all but um so i think we're going to post these guys up in front and we're going to try to we'll put you guys back here these are both um indirect fire weapons right up and over so we can put them behind the trees without any worry that we'll damage our own stuff or damage our ability to hit the enemy and then you lot just get back here everybody just Oh, wait, the Super Squig should not be with the other troops, probably. <laughs> I'm going to put the Super Squig over here. Can he hide in trees? Is that a thing? Yeah, okay, he is stealthed. They probably will not happen upon him, and I'm just going to I'm gonna hope that we can make something happen with him. But our real goal here, our front line, is the troops that aren't in the battle yet. So we got to hang out for a minute. Now, remember, they attacked us. They have to come to us. Uh, they will be able to use these war wagons to make that um a little bit awkward like we're not we're not gonna be able to stand back forever but this is i think the right way to start so hold on let me grab all of these cavalry units the expendable cavalry units because we may want to use these guys to um let me see how are they how are they oh god they have so many so many cavalry units so they're firing already they're not quite in range of our siege stuff uh what is that they're probably firing at the i should i should not have put the uh, the big uh, the um the big ones in front i was thinking well this isn't even really the front line we're going to put other stuff in front of that but i wasn't thinking about how long it was going to take for the the new troops to actually get in uh, their positions so, like I was saying, what we have to do is try to entice the as many of the, the Empire Cavalry into charges that impact on the Goblin line as possible. Alright, we managed to dodge the Mortar pretty effectively. And they're going to keep pushing forward with it. Okay, we're close enough that our own, our own siege weapons are firing. We do have Rachnik, we have Magic, um... And to be perfectly honest with you, like, troops, their troops that are, uh, their, their knights that are hit by Itchy Nuisance will have three melee attack once their charge bonus ends. So, it's totally viable 
for us to um uh, for us to to win close up melee. We just got to get them engaged and keep them engaged, which is going to be the tricky part. With the super squig, I'm not 100% sure how we're going to apply it. The thing is, if we try to run it toward their archers, they'll just turn around and shoot it. And it has, like, no health, right? We saw we saw it get torn apart. It has 118 health. So we saw one of them get shredded by ranged fire very quickly previously. So what we really have to do with it is... I don't know. I don't know. what we... <laughs> I honestly have no idea how to use this damn thing. Um... Ex explosive troops are tricky. I've never been very good with them. There aren't a lot of them in the game, but we did play a full campaign with the uh, the Pirate Coast, and they have they have such troops. Right, let's grab you guys, and so the primary value of the Spider Rider archers is that they are a quick applier of poison. And remember, poison is a significant stat debuff. Um. It is a percentage stat debuff, so like it won't uh, it won't it won't hurt as much against bad troops, which is kind of funny. But we're just gonna have to um, we're just gonna have to be smart about how we apply it. And then I don't know what we're we're gonna use our own cavalry to counter charge, right? Like we're gonna let them charge, and then we're gonna charge their flank, and hopefully, I'm not a hundred percent sure if this is gonna work because our troops are, are relatively small. Hopefully we'll be able to put so much mass into their backside that they can't run away, right? We pin them in place with our own cavalry and then have the biggins do the thing. I don't know if this is going to work. And again, uh, again, it's not the end of the world if we lose this battle. I don't think this is a, a particularly bad one. We have our own large troops. I am ready for them to attempt a charge on the large troops. I don't think that that would be a bad thing necessarily. I'm going to spread the biggins out a little bit try to be more responsive to the likely cavalry charge position reposition i don't want you guys involved with this at all okay here we go it begins so now that we've got this thing happening this unit of spiders should fall back I was just trying to get them to commit in any way we could, and we have got it to happen. So now the now the task is keeping them there. Uh, Rachnik has Gorkle fix it. Do we we don't have it? Okay, we don't have it all the way upgraded, but we can do this. Hopefully, try to keep them in place while we move troops in to uh, to hit them from behind, and then we have two units of biggins over here who just have to run directly at the enemies and do your best. Uh, I'm going to have our siege units at this point focus in on the enemy ranged. We don't necessarily need them to fire at the horses, because um, horses are pretty good at dodging siege units anyway. And it looks like the they saw the super squig. I moved it out of the forest too much. If they want to just charge it, that's actually 100% fine. That's I, I, The super squig getting to full force hit a unit of cavalry is kind of our best case scenario so i'm all about it that sounds all right to me so this is just one empire captain okay let's have some let's have some troops get in on him i want to try to put these goblins in a spot where they're going to be able to actually catch horses and they've cast some kind of big spell this is the uh the leaping golden golden lion spell or i guess they're wolves um, if, listen, if they want to spend winds of magic fighting my goblins, I'm okay with it. It's fine. Okay, so Raknik is in a place where he probably can't afford to be for very long. I'm going to split you off this way because I think we have better coverage on the other side, but we need to get Raknik closer. I'm a little worried if I tell him to move. No, it doesn't cancel his spell order. Okay, we're going to very quickly watch this happen because I'm very curious how effective this will be. Get him. Wow, pretty effective, actually. That was half of that unit's total HP. <laughs> this game's good. It's, it's all right. This is an all right game. Okay, let's... So we want to keep the forest... Uh, actually, hold on. I think I want to keep them basically where they are. I don't, I don't want to disrupt the position too much. But after we get these dudes engaged with anything else, we want to wheel those dudes around. You stay on them. You stay on him, I guess. All right, we got our wolf riders out here. All right, 
flank charge. Okay, so this is where we're going to cast in some spiders to hopefully seal the enemies in a little bit more. And it looks to me like we've got them. They're going to have a hard time escaping, and we are going to have uh, biggins actually rip them apart. You should probably focus here. You should focus there. So I know I'm doing a lot of like pausing and, and issuing like incredibly specific orders. Um, and it's going to make these battles take forever, but uh, I would like to win. <laughs> I'd like to win this battle if at all possible. And you've all seen already what happens when I don't, I don't pause enough during the heavy, uh, heavy micro battles. We might lose our spider because it's going to get attacked by a lot of stuff here. But I think that that would be, we got to hold some of these enemies. And like, we, we're so bad at fighting enemy characters. The spider is actually quite good at it, right? And it, it comes with automatic poison and stuff. Um, I think it's reasonable to have it in like this. We're just going to have to babysit it a little bit. Let's have the Black Orc big boss. I think we can, we can probably just run him over here. He's not quite a character killer yet, but he can definitely fight some spearmen. And um, these biggins have to remain in this area because they're anti-spider troops. Or anti, uh, anti cavalry troops. These units of squigs, I'm going to have press the enemy ranged, which is going to cause some of the enemy um, spearmen to turn around, which is probably fine. I, I, the squigs are single turn hires, right? Even, even through the global pool, so it doesn't really matter if they get lost. Okay, I think that we are doing all right here. I'll let the spiders resolve, and we're going to get this. Stay in there. Okay, I think that those guys are dead. Well, hold on, don't just charge directly into the spears, though. Alright, and like, this is a good... Oof, boy. Magic. Let's have the squig hoppers try to help with this situation. Charge should be pretty good. Okay, we've got enemy cavalry committing all over the place. So, let's deal with the enemy cavalry that is committing all over the place. First of all, <laughs> this unit of Empire Knights has really charged those goblins very effectively. Uh, I think I'm just going to have you guys all run forward. I'm a little worried about our big boss. He's so he's missing so much health. My big my big concern is that he's really missing a huge amount of health. Uh, I I think I'm going to have him charge here, too. We're just going to kind of abandon this area a little bit. We managed to get some squig hoppers into their archers. That's going to cause some havoc. Those guys are going to get shot to pieces, but they're going to do some damage on the way. And over here, it looks to me like we've crushed this side of the battle pretty thoroughly. Raknik is getting charged by the enemy lord, which is not great. We can put, um, we can put some of the biggins on that. And then... I think Curse of the Bad Moon is probably a bad idea in this situation. Do I want to just Gorkle? I mean, we, know, we probably can just hold off, right? I don't think we're in a situation where we really need to cast at the moment. So yeah, everybody just keep doing what you're doing. Let's watch this side of the battle for the moment. It's like a lot of this is going pretty, uh, pretty reasonably. Oof, that's a devastating time for an AoE to hit there. Focus on that guy. Looks like we got a little bit of a wraparound on these knights, so hopefully we'll be able to break them. Let's commit to that great big wog. Remember, the wog is more effective when we have a call to wog running on the strategy map. Oh, they have an enemy character that is all the way up inside of the, uh, the siege crew. That's an issue. We need one man on a boar to solve this problem. And that's probably all it'll take. I think this is going to be under control. The biggins, the biggins do their job very effectively. Uh, now that you have disengaged from the enemy hero because of just raw mass, they can't actually keep getting to him. Uh, I'm going to have these wolf riders continue to harass those Empire Knights. It's not a good fight one on one, but if we keep an if we keep a unit on them, then they're less likely to to get brave and turn around. Looks like this battle over here is going all right. I'm thinking it might be time for the rogue idol to just run straight toward the enemy backline. Right, put the put put a lot of pressure on their ranged. He's gonna approach slowly, and unfortunately there are Empire Knights up in there, which is why our squig riders are getting so wrecked. Uh I'm gonna itchy nuisance one more time here. More for the more to deal with the hero than to deal with the uh 
the knights who are basically dead. All right. Is he going to make it out of there? Huh. It's an awful lot of troops. Where are you guys going? I, t I just wanted one person to run out. It's kind of remarkable how quickly he did damage over there. Like, that's a lot... It's a lot of kills off of a single charge. You can see the issues that ranged units or that uh, mounted units sometimes have moving through trees, but should have a good strong charge now. And he's got a a health advantage. He's good strong charge cavalry. He's got a big charge bonus. All right, so we're taking a lot of fire over here. We need some redirection from these cavalry units, which means we're going to lose containment on their cavalry. Uh, our spider is in bad shape. You guys need to like get over here he is doing the thing he's supposed to do he's drawing fire off uh, looks like we did chase that unit of empire knights off the map so smaller cavalry units should reorient themselves this side is is pretty is going pretty well if we could kill Dolph Graf it would be very helpful but really we have shown to have a lot of trouble killing empire characters they unfortunately have pretty good stats. I might use spiders just to make sure that we're keeping poison on that dude 100% of the time. And it looks to me like we're about to take a cavalry charge over here, probably in the um, probably in the the siege crew rather than over on this side. So let's just put some bodies in the way. It's not going as poorly as I thought it might. I, I really thought that this this was maybe going to be super ugly, and we're 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 giving them a fight. Really need you guys to get out of there. All right, we are beating their lord on this front. Get him! I'm surprised at how much damage the biggins are taking here. I guess it must it must mostly be from Balthazar himself. He's a wizard though. I wouldn't think he'd be a great melee combatant. Okay, we're going to need to apply some Black Orc over here. We are getting to the point, I think, where it makes... If we can if we can extract Rachnik and get him over here safely, uh, it's, it's starting to make a lot of sense to use some AoE spells. They've, they've gathered up their melee. Uh, so we have the two units of Spider Rider Archers, or the two units of Mounted archers that are over here are looking pretty rough but aside from that honestly things were going super well over here for a while and then at, at some point we completely stopped dealing damage to their knights and I, I don't know why they haven't lost any health in a while we'll uh just keep keep reducing their stats please finish the job it'd be super helpful if the job were finished and then do we want to turn him around because their their dude has landed again but we might need him. Yeah, I'm going to turn him around. I, I want to... I'd love to kill this guy. If we could actually get rid of him, that would be awesome. All right, so... Let's have one unit of Spider Rider Archers focused on keeping the poison up there. You keep the poison up here. You guys just fight him, I guess. And it looks like we're getting... We're getting in their range. Who do we want the Rogue Idol really focused on? Probably not these guys, right? Now that we've gotten them to break and run... The Wolf Riders will be able to keep them running for the moment, and in fact, I'm going to have you stay on that. I'm going to turn him this way. Where's the Arachnorok? Is it actually dead? It's not. It might be savable. It, like, it would be better not to lose it, right? Like, obviously, obviously losing the army is not ideal. Um, so we do have to use it in whatever way might allow us to win the actual battle. But if we can save it, it would be cool. It's gonna have a hard time fighting off. Yeah, it needs it needs to be saved. Just, I don't I don't want to I don't want to go halfway on any of this stuff. But let's you guys get over here and see if you can do something. All we need is to break the knights off for a minute so that it can um, so that it can stop panicking. If it gets its act back together and starts actually fighting, it will be um, it will probably be able to beat them. The problem is just that it's panicked and it's going to stay panicked as long as they're directly on it. Okay, yeah, run through, run through units. You guys, turn around and do this. 
Okay, their, their hero is wounded. Wounded and dying. I think I'm fine with letting those goblins be uh, bait. Yeah, if we can, if we can, basically, if we can offer the, um, uh, did I actually give you orders? <laughs> get over here and do something. Um, if we can get these guys to just turn around, like, even just provide them another target, something that they can, they can get attracted to, that will be good enough. Like I said, all we need is for it to be, to have a moment to recover its, uh, its wits. Guys, get in here. I like the fact that these Empire Knights chased Reknik. I think that's actually really good for us. Uh, I'm going to cast some spiders. So we're going to have these spiders engage with those spearmen. Uh, we did kill their lord, so that's real good news for us. We seem to have caused them to AoE their own troops, <laughs> which is helpful. The, you know, it's one of those unpredictable moving vortex things, so he just cast it and it went awry on him. It's nice to see that happen to the AI sometimes, because I feel like it happens to me a lot. Alright, you guys back up. We're going to let the Black Orc come through, let these guys get their attention fully on the Spiderlings, and then flank charge. That'll probably break them down real fast. And it's time for another little bit of this. We still have some, some charging going on down here, which is not ideal, obviously. This worked, so hopefully, the, um, hopefully our spider will recover its wits and come back to us. Got our units turning around. Warriors are rallying all over the map. They're still not like in a great place, but okay, we're winning this. We gotta we gotta figure out what we want to do with our catapults. Who's next most important? I'm not that worried about those spearmen. They're not really gonna accomplish anything meaningful. We got honestly, we've got a lot of the big groups of enemies pretty broken down. I'm gonna have the Doom Diver fire at the Empire Knights. So we haven't talked a lot about the Doom Diver yet. Aside from the uh, talking, uh, aside from mentioning the fact that it shoots goblins, which is very funny to me. Uh, honestly, I don't know if there's anything for you guys to do. Really, you could shoot at the. I guess you could shoot at the war wagons. I don't. They don't seem to be moving around very much. Maybe they'll stand still long enough for that to work. Uh, let's go. Everybody in on Dolph Graf, except uh, the two units of goblin spears can just fight those spears over there. Uh, but one of the big advantages that the Doom Diver has is because the catapult is a living being in like a wingsuit, uh, it can steer. So they're a little bit more effective against cavalry than most other artillery because the projectile has the ability to aim. It effectively has aftertouch, right? So we're just going to hope that, uh, that he can figure that out, that he can lead those horses effectively. All right, we broke those guys down. Get in here. Let's get him over to this side. We might we might make it to the other side of this. All right, you need to withdraw. Let the spiders continue to We're just going to try to force his body through the uh, through the enemies here. All right. Counter charges. Rocknick gets over here and preps us some more spiders. That feels a little unfair. I'm sure they're very disappointed by the, the fact that I was able to make troops just appear in front of their charge. I'd be annoyed if that happened to me. Actually, let's have the spider go this way. I'm going to try to use these guys to prevent the charge. He's having a lot of trouble moving. Ah, oh, that's a shame. They didn't, they didn't recover. I was counting on them recovering. Okay, you guys are chasing some archers who don't really need to be chased anymore. Those guys can break off. What I would love to do is get the spider to a place where it is protected by any other unit, and it's looking like that's going to be a little tricky right now. What are you stepping on? You're stepping on... It's not the light wizard, because we can see the light wizard's health bar. There's another thing in there, and it's hard for me to... Is that just another character? Oh, that's Balthazar Gelt. You're stepping on Balthazar Gelt. That's fine. You, you can do that. That's a, that's a reasonable use of your powers. Uh, is this side clear yet no we, we still need to kill this dude because he's large because he's on horseback the biggins should kill him really quickly and it bums me out that they're not i'm assuming it's just you know he's got really good combat stats which is why i'm going to continue making him itchy and then over here we're breaking these guys i'm gonna have the spider hatchlings focus there the big the the big boss try to not stand in the middle of the enemy spearman group Use the spiders to prevent them from surrounding him a little. 
And then we have we have some projectiles coming in. Get that. I do wish that the enemies were grouped up a little bit better. It's just like it's very hard to um, it's very hard to AOE them effectively here. Let's get some of these groups of spiders out here. You guys come this way. All of you guys come this way. We have a situation. Let the let the the Arachnarok just be at a distance and contribute range damage. Rachnik is in melee combat, which is not exactly where we want him to be. But we do need him to get up there, right? Okay, so they've put they've put a lord, or they've, they've put a hero in on our hero, and that's a problem that we need to solve. Let's have you guys charge. I would love it if we could get the Doom Diver clear. We need this Black Orc big boss to disengage from this fight. If if we're gonna save him, he's gotta run. Uh, you're doing the right thing. Just keep moving. I'm gonna have him try to get in here. You guys push through. Just apply, apply a little bit of a charge and then keep moving. I mean, if we lose him, he's like level 3, right? It's not like this is a resource that we've expended a tremendous amount on, but it would be best for him to survive. You guys need to get over here. You've done you've done some good charging. Uh, we got Wolf Riders. Let's just press these dudes. The, the Rogue Idol is actually doing a fine job of, of standing and fighting over here. I'm going to have these archers who no longer have weapons just co come over here and interfere with this. The mortars have not been super effective against us, I don't think. Our troops have been moving around a lot. Um, but it is a shame that we didn't really have a good way of affecting them early in the battle because our troops are, most of our um, infantry, or most of our cavalry rather, do do so little damage to armored troops that they, they weren't able to kill anything. They weren't able to kill anything like that. What are you guys doing? Oh, they got Net of Ammon talked. They lost their ability to move is what they're doing. Just keep throwing spears and stuff. Yeah, you know what? You can get in there and do some melee damage. That's fine. Alright, stay on him. Stay on him. Uh, where's Rechnik right now? Is he still... Yeah. Uh, we are out of spiders. I mean, it's not entirely unreasonable, I think, for me to just apply the, uh, put on the Curse of the Bad Moon and hope that it kills the enemies faster than it kills Rachnik, because Rachnik himself has a lot of HP, right? right now that you guys are unnetted, I'm going to have you charge something over here. All right, we're breaking those guys. My units are losing combat with the enemy siege crew because the enemy siege crew is a little non-standard. I'm going to have the Arachnarok. Let's see if we can swap the positions here. You guys charge these spearmen to buy us some time. The Arachnarok's uh, quite fast for the kind of thing that it is. All right, so the background of the fight has collapsed considerably, right? The catapult is out of ammo. I'm not sure how we're going to solve this issue back here. They have a strong combat character who we can't realistically kill with anything that we still have in our backfield. We're breaking down a lot of their stuff, but I think we're going to end up losing to a losing two characters again here. Like we've killed all their cavalry. Uh, I'm gonna. Crown of Command, those guys not to break. You have to stay in and do melee. Uh, you guys are going to run up and stab the spearmen, because I don't really care what happens to goblin archers. You are also going to run up and stab the spearmen. You cannot fight that enemy character right now. You can win battles around enemy characters a fair amount of the time, just by, you know, uh, killing off most of their other stuff and forcing a retreat. 
And it's a strategy we've been trying a lot here, and it has worked some of the time. Alright, if we can kill off the last couple of their units out here, and we turn the big monsters around and go back in there. Like, the rogue idol is not super healthy, but it is still at, um, it is still at very, very high leadership, and it's tough as hell. Okay, they're doing a lot more damage to their own units with some of their um, some of their magical gambits at this point than they are to us. Alright, you guys at this point have to commit this way. Gelt is considering charging the Arachnarok. You can see the projectiles coming off the Arachnarok. It is still still dealing small amounts of damage, still poisoning him. Arachnik, get out of there. Oh, he's panicked. Doom Diver crew, you know what? Catapult crew, get in there and do melee. The Doom Diver crew is still alive and they are still willing to fight. We just have to, we have to clear their. Um... Shoot, how do I get you guys to abandon your stuff? There we go. Okay, do any of the Doom Divers still work? It looks like they're all broken. Oh no, one of them is. One of them is good. Okay, go over there and grab that. So this is an issue you can have sometimes of the uh, the siege weapons themselves breaking. So they're trying to stop his approach with this uh, with this captain, and we'll kill the captain. That will that will not hold out for them in the long term, but it might be long enough for them to kill the, the Arachnarok. And there's nothing we can really do about that. We've pushed the war wagons off. Looks like the last of the Empire Knights are about to give up. We are not going to get another wog, and if our um, if Raknik recovers, we still have wins, but it doesn't look likely. I mean, I can try to have him just push through. My guess is that he'll get stuck. Nope, that Empire character is riding away from him. Never mind. Right, we gotta we gotta get over here and kill their um oh, they're gonna just charge him with, <laughs> with they're gonna cycle charge him with all of their units. If we can if we can clear Wow, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> if we can clear the ground for Rachnik so that Rachnik is able to recover and start casting, I think that's gonna put us in a good spot. Nice get over there, help. Also, it would help a lot if these guys would stop giving up before they get close to the enemy. Alright, where's my Doom Diver crew? They're okay, they're kind of approaching the thing. As you can see we have units that are uh, wavering all over the place. Like these guys are probably going to give up and run away again before they get close enough to do any harm. If they were a little braver, we would have won the battle. But unfortunately, this is a uh, this is a persistent issue for greenskins. They're just they're just too cowardly. They're just too cowardly to fight a lot of the time. Alright, uh, these guys are... yeah. Okay, well we definitely did not leave their army in a place where it is a threat to Carrot Cadron. So that's good. Raknik is... Uh, Raknik is definitely going to be eliminated. Like, there's not going to be any fallback here. This army is going to be eliminated. Uh, that was probably winnable. I'm not super great at the battles. I'm okay. I'm alright, I'm... That was probably winnable for a uh, for a better player, though. I think the war wagon is tough for us. The war the war wagon is a a reason that we need to take boar boys more seriously, maybe. But you can see, like one of those war wagons only got seventy three kills. Some of their basic spearmen, most of their basic spearmen, were more effective in the battle than that. So maybe I'm maybe I'm worrying about them too much. It's weird that the Super Squig is credited with zero kills when we know it killed, we saw it kill a bunch of guys on horseback. I wonder if those, maybe those tags are not generating the numbers correctly. Alright, so they have a whole new stack running in. It's a bad time, man. This is bad news. They need to stop having so many damn troops to devote to this front. I'll tell you what, if I were 
100% of the, uh, if I were 100% focused on one of my fronts and I left a huge portion of my army completely uh, unprotected, I am 1000% certain that all of the other AI factions around me would take advantage of that, and I wish that the AI had to suffer the same issues. Also, just to kick me in the neck while I'm down, all of your populace is unhappy. Here's, here's another problem for you to have. Alright, well... Volkmar the Grim is in a very murderable position. Toddbringer has to get dealt with. Ooh, and he's got he's brought a stronger army. Reichsguard and rocket batteries and enough great swords. That's tricky. Ulrich Ludenhoff is probably hmm. Okay. What what's the status of Wazhampa's army? Are they they're pretty healthy? Oh, they're healthy-ish. How's his wog stack? Big. Soft, but big. We can take this guy one-on-one. -on -one. We don't need the additional reinforcements from Azhag. So Azhag can kill Ludenhoff and take Nagenhoff. And then he can begin. He can become pressured down here. We're no longer really losing money without the 4th Army, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Oh, he can't, because uh, movement problems. We just don't, we don't quite have the movement. Is there red in that arrow? Uh, yeah, there's a tiny little bit of red, so that won't be able to... We won't be able to do that this turn. Well, let's get this done. We can, we can do this for sure. It's telling me... It, it is suggesting to me that we would get screwed on the auto-resolve here. I'm kind of curious. It's like, it's so hard to tell when it does this thing. This is a battle that we should win handily, right? I mean, we just have a lot of bodies to throw at their spearmen. These archers are not particularly good units. And then he's got, like, a couple of things that are interesting here. The rocket battery is a problem. The cannon's uh, going to be an issue for the trolls, for sure. But we're going to quick save and uh, auto-resolve this, just because I'm curious what will happen here. And I am, I am reserving the right to go back and do it manually. Okay, that's, that's a bit of a result. Let's let's go back and do that manually. I was just I'm always curious when it shows you that big area where it's like I don't know I don't know what'll happen. It's by the way it's not letting me open up the menu for the uh, for the reload. There we go. Yeah, we'll do that manually. I'm always curious when it shows you that area of uncertainty. I don't know anything could happen. Uh, so the number one most important part of this battle is going to be getting that hellstorm battery under control, and we don't have a t ton of great options for this, but what we do have is just a vastly superior, numerically, army. And in this case, um, our, more of our troops are capable of standing and fighting than in the last battle, where we had a lot of, like, goblin spearmen and stuff. A huge percentage of his of his wog stack is boys. They're half units, but they're still, they're still boys. And we got black orcs and stuff. Although, to be perfectly honest with you, Goblin Spearmen and his army are better anyway, because he does have the Goblin buffing uh, traits. We also, remember, have a number of units of fanatics here. Uh, uh, goblin Archer fanatics who can shoot the, the spinning loonies. So we're going to be able to kill a lot of their Spearmen immediately upon contact. Uh, the Stone Trolls should be very powerful here. And I guess it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down basically to like nasty Skulkers to, to get on the Siege crew. That's doable. We can do that. Alright, so how are they setting up? We are... Definitely at a siege disadvantage. Let's... Okay, let's set up the Nasty Skulkers in a position off to the side. And then we'll, we'll move the rest of our army to the opposite edge. Just to try to draw the enemies away from the Skulkers as quickly as possible. Uh... Trying to figure, how much do I want to like play way back and let the like rely on our reinforcements? Because part of the part of the plan for this army traditionally would be to play way forward, right? We have all of this vanguard deployment, but I don't know that that's a thing we want to do here. I think we want the reinforcement troops, but I'm always leery of playing far back when there's a hellstorm rocket battery involved. Because boy, those things are. Those things will kill you dead. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull the whole the whole army basically back here, uh, not you two. There we are. 
Let's get back here. We'll figure out actual positions later. Once it is more clear what the enemy is choosing to do. You guys need to approach, but slowly and carefully. Now, we are on the attack here. So we they don't have to come to us. And they may not. They may choose not to. That's fine. Well, if, if that's the case, if they're going to wall up and make us come to them, we will wait until the Wog army is completely in. Let the Wog army be the front line. And we will, uh, we will press them that way. It looks like that's the plan. They're, they're going to set up and just wait for us to come to them. And we will do so after letting our Skulkers get, <laughs> get into a better position. Because they're going to let me move the Skulkers all the way around to, like, back here. And as long as we don't get them too close to any enemy units... Uh, we will we will remain unseen. So where does their where does that where does the range for that thing end? This is a little awkward to do with enemy units because you can't select them. So it's like here. Okay, let's take a moment and arrange the force. So we want all of the boys. Sorry, we want all of the boys. I'm not sure how the Wog Army benefits from our Lord's stats. Because obviously these goblin units are a lot better um, than they would ordinarily be if they get the benefit of our Lord's Red Line. I'm, I'm just unsure if that's the case. So we'll form these guys up here. The Lava Archers should just get out of the way. We don't really want them to be part of the push. And then once we're formed up, I'm basically just going to have us run forward in a big block. Interesting. What are they doing and why? Oh, also, you are high enough level that you have conduit, so we should be mashing conduit. I don't understand what they're doing. If I were them, I would not be moving right now. I'd just be... I guess they see my formation changing, and... I mean, it sort of seems like they're responding to these guys a little bit, right? Trying to, like, wheel their army away so that they have more troops in position to intercept. But... They sure shouldn't be reacting to my invisible units. I will be very annoyed if that's the case. Just wait. Wait for everybody to get, to get in position. I don't know if they're nervous. We gotta make sure that we're staying far enough away. I don't have a good intuitive sense of the distance that our stealth works at. So, uh, try to be cautious here. These guys are pretty fast. They are ready to run in when it is time to run in. It's like our troops are almost done repositioning. You can see the uh, the moving fast icons over here. Once those are once those are all done, we will press. All right. So we do have to be a little bit careful because units are gonna when I when I issue this command, which is everybody but you, and you. Just block forward, like, why won't they? Huh, that's weird. Why can't I issue an order to move any further forward than than, than that? Hold on a second. Uh, when I issue this move, yeah, look at that. It They accept the move forward order right up to this point, and then they're like, nah, I'm good. That's as close as I would like to get to the enemies. <laughs> what is happening? And any further move forward just goes to there? Why? Why? Hmm. Hmm. Why is that? Why are they so much more willing to move sideways than forward? Because this is not good. Okay. Let's issue this order a little bit differently. Let's try selecting all the units in the front line. Okay, we can tell them to move up. And then we'll select all the units in the middle line and tell them to move up. Yeah, that's, um, that's a real weird thing. I don't know that I've ever seen it do that before. And then all of these units. These back units. So, like, the trolls are a lot faster than orcs, right? Uh, and if we don't watch them a little bit here and make sure that they're moving at a sensible... I'm actually going to give them a much shorter order. Uh, they'll just run up way in front of the enemies. Or way in front of the rest of our units, then get torn to pieces. Uh, let's have... Oh, geez. I don't know. Just kind of shoot at the middle of their stuff. Just aim middleward. Boy, it sure looks like they're responding to the units that they, officially speaking, are not supposed to know about. Gives me some feelings. I have suspicions. 
you guys I'm gonna have move over here and that's probably gonna that's gonna happen fast and it's gonna draw some attention but this is the time to advance oh yeah I should give you a guard mode order let's just kind of shoot for the middle of the enemies with you actually where are you guys going Oh, the problem was that my group select had these guys in it, right? So I was hitting the back wall with their with their part of the shape, I guess. That's not the way that that should work, but it's probably the way that it was working. Keep moving. Try to waste the rockets. Let it fire another volley and then turn around. I was kind of hoping that the enemies would start responding to this by moving forward. weird that there's not another volley coming. I guess we, we must have moved outside of... Yeah, we moved outside of the cone. Well, this is working way better than I would have thought then. <laughs> We're really distracting them. You can see the trolls have already made all that distance. So if we get another volley, they'll, they'll fire in such a way that they're, tr they're trying to lead our troops. So I will just turn around so that the volley can't possibly land on us. In fact, I'm going to turn around f now because I'm... A little worried we're going to hit the back wall. and Okay, they're, they're ceasing that foolishness. They are now actually firing at us. Which means you guys can come back to doing this. Don't want the Skulkers to move in until the other enemy units move. Let's get our magic here. You can bad moon at... Okay, it's it's not that long of a range. But we definitely want to drop a bad moon like right in the middle of all their stuff, right? I'm just going to... That's his order. Just run up and make that work. All right, and then... Give more specific run forward orders here. We do not want these guys to stop, right? We, we want them to absorb the whole initial charge and volley of the enemy... Sorry, guys. Listen, you're goblins. You, you knew what you were getting into when you signed up here. Uh, these goblin archers should actually focus, though. Let's try to burn that guy, the outriders with the grenade launchers, down as fast as possible. They have one unit of Reichsguard, and then they have another cavalry unit, right? The Blazing Sun. Yeah. Those Blazing Sun dudes are not particularly scary. Uh, don't be too stressed about them. Their big deal is they, do, they have magic fire weapons. It's not going to be all that different from just being stabbed with normal lances for us. But if you had an army that was, like, regeneration-based, uh, I will say, they'll do bonus damage to the trolls. So we do have to care about that. All right, that'll be enough for the initial, the initial move. I don't actually want these guys to engage just yet, because it's, at the moment it's easy enough for the enemy to just turn their archers and fire. I want these guys ready to flank in and start shooting as soon as the enemy archers begin firing on our troops. They have to make a decision about targeting. Looks like their plan is just to move a, a unit of archers over here to deal with this. Which is fine, as plans go. Not an unreasonable way to deal with it. Interesting, they're reacting to this, um, this flanking move with a lot more bodies than I was expecting. You gotta be getting close to that range. Okay, he will cast when he reaches that location. I don't want to get so close that I lead them to like pay more attention to the skulkers. All right, he stopped. Here comes the cast. They're actually moving more units back than I was expecting. There's a lot of fleeing going on. Those guys, you guys go for this. Trolls in on those knights as quickly as possible. Did you guys seriously? Do we have people already panicking? They must have. They, they took some siege fire, I'm assuming. Okay, uh, we have archers close, though. Let's do some stuff. Uh, you're not the good archers. You're not good archers. All the, all the good archers are the ones who are not. <laughs> Remarkably, all the good archers are the ones who ran away. Uh, it's it's such cowardice that you might almost call it treason. You know what? Actually, let's have one of these units of trolls kind of flank around. 
Uh, so we're going to let them get up and hopefully we'll be able to uh, hopefully we'll be able to do some good spinning loonies in the meantime. This doesn't seem like a bad spot for an itchy nuisance, right? And now is your moment. The enemy is engaging. Get the hell in here and start cutting throats. And you guys, same deal. This is your moment. The Black Orcs are some of our slowest units, and it's going to take them a minute to get into the battle. By the time they do, the enemy's going to be very engaged. Best case scenario here is we get a little bit of a wraparound, we trap the Reichsguard, and we just tear them to pieces before they can uh, be a real threat to anybody. Okay, there we go. <laughs> the Curse of the Bad Moon has just sort of wandered out into the middle of nowhere. Not ideal. Here comes, here comes the fire. Okay, you guys are close enough now that we can start considering the use of loonies. So you will have to run forward to like there. You gotta you gotta move your, your archers up real close sometimes to make this work. You got Cowardice. The cowardice is so extreme. So it looks like we might have a problem with the Knights of the Blazing Sun quote-unquote accidentally moving back into the, the units that they very clearly knew were here the whole time and weren't doing a particularly good job of pretending that they didn't know about, which is annoying. These skulkers may not get accomplished the thing we wanted them to accomplish. Because of shenanigans on the part of the AI. All right, we're doing some good damage over here. A lot of you staying on those, staying on those Reichsguard. They're breaking, but we need them broken. You should move up, guys. Press this way. I mean, don't chase those archers. Just go over here. You guys also kind of flank around. Run for the middle. Yep, our our units got our uh, skulkers got run off and broken immediately. All right, that should do some good damage. Pretty much, no matter where it lands, or no no matter which direction it runs in. All right, you guys have to do a different thing now because you're incompetent. Uh, they did move the Knights of the Blazing Sun over here, so they are going to do some bonus damage to the trolls. The trolls are still tough though. And as far as I know, the bonus damage dealt by flaming stuff against um, against regenerati uh, regenerating units isn't automatically armor piercing or anything. Like, I think the troll's armor will still uh, protect them. Make sure we have loonies coming out. Uh, we also have some melee units that have loonies. Let's make sure... Okay, they're not in a position to... <laughs> they broke immediately upon making it anywhere near the enemy, which does complicate the use of the loonies a little bit. Uh, you guys get over here. Yeah, I mean, do that thing. We'll figure it out. 40 seconds on your next group of loonies. And it, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the enemies are breaking. Again, the, the Curse of the Bad Moon immediately ran as far away from combat as it could, but it cut through some enemies on the way there, at least. You should probably keep pushing around the side. Loonies did some decent work in there. Some spinning occurred. I don't know, just get over here. Just fight something. I, mean, I don't even care what you guys fight. We're back on the wall already. Uh, let's have you, I guess, yeah, you know what, we'll have the catapults roll up. Focus more back here. Okay, so you guys are still just getting to do whatever you want. This, this part has worked out fantastically. The enemy is devoting zero resources to dealing with our spider archers, despite the fact that they're, uh, they're replete with ranged units of their own, and that's lovely. Uh, you orc boys run off this Reichsguard. Where did the did the Ra Rising Sun guys all die? No, these are them, right? Yeah, they, <laughs> they just decided, you know what? It's not worth it. I know our whole deal is fighting enemy monsters who regenerate, but uh, not worth it, it turns out. 
Alright, so we do have some stuff going on. We do have some melee units that are still fighting. Actually, no, we kind of don't anymore. You guys, kill him. Lot should just run through. Yeah, kill those guys. Okay, the battle's over. We win. It's going to take a little while to finish playing it out, but, but we got him. Okay, uh, actually, let's have one of the units of trolls move over here, and then we, we do still have to kill these knights. Which is not totally nothing. It's not 100% trivial. Let's have you move up, and... Itchy Nuisance... Boy. Is there really anything to Itchy Nuisance? Let's have you shoot a projectile at the war wagon. We gotta give we gotta give some of our units some specific orders. At this point, they're not interested in just figuring out what to do, you know. Uh, this is a unit of black orcs that has no health left, so y'all should fall back. You guys get up here. You guys charge that way. Those should get broken very, very quickly. Over here, we're gonna push these these guys off the map quite easily. That should kill you. Yeah, you guys press there. It looks like it looks like we're basically good. Go middle. Uh, we do have loonies available again, but my suspicion is we're not going to get to use them because I think the enemies are mostly going to disengage before um, before that becomes possible. Oh, we probably have too many people devoted to the to the cause of killing the enemy lord. Um. He is not he's not dying though. I'll say that I'll say that for him. He's tough. The grand theogenist here on his big fancy war throne. Uh, he is tough. He's not super not super good at murder, but he's super good at not being murdered. Which is it's an important skill. Oh, look at the trolls. Look at the trolls doing their work. All of the enemy archers have realized the same thing that the Knights of the Blazing Sun realized. I don't want to be here. I'm not having even a little bit of fun. Stay on those guys. I'm gonna just put a couple more half units of boys over there. You guys should run deep. Where is Wizardman? Wizardman and your friends. Push. Where is combat still happening? Here, I guess? We'll throw up another Curse of the Bad Moon after that goes off as well. Uh, I don't know, like, there? That's unlikely to harm any of my troops. Oh, you guys have run out of ammo. I'm gonna have you fall back. You know, the thing about fanatics is they're supposed to be, like, basically battle-crazed. This thing where they're constantly running away... It's just... It's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment to all of their training. Their literal, probably, minutes of training. Alright, the trolls are doing the thing trolls are supposed to do. Where's my other unit of trolls? Are oh, they still pursuing knights? That's probably not necessary anymore. Also, are my nasty skulkers losing in melee in a 2v1 versus archers? Is that really what's happening right now? So many of my troops are so bad at their jobs. So un unbelievably comically bad at their jobs. <laughs> how, do, how do greenskins ever threaten anybody in the, in the Warhammer fantasy world? cavalry unit is just getting chased around by the the bad moon it's working out all right for us and we're gonna push a lot of the enemy units just off the map here because they're going to run until they hit the edge of the world uh what else do we have left you guys can all just i don't know do this it does feel like we can maybe fast forward this a little bit Now, we don't have anything fast enough. Okay, those guys are permanently broken. We don't have anything fast enough to actually threaten the war wagon, like to catch the war wagon. And it's definitely a unit where its whole thing is convincing you to chase it and then it shoots you while you're chasing it. Uh, so all we can really do is grab all these archers and be like, hey guys, do very, very, very small amounts of damage to this war wagon. 
and at some point it will uh, at some point it will give up it's not that it will die but it will um it will lose enough leadership from sustaining missile fire to want to stop fighting see that the white bar is uh it's not entirely full okay you guys are good you, you permanently broke that unit All of you. All of you on this. Alright, the trolls are not needed. I think we can... The other units can chase these archers off the map. We need the speed of the trolls to, to get over here. You know what? Honestly, we are actually doing more damage than I thought we would. They have, like, rifles and stuff. This doesn't feel like a very good strategy, but if you put enough archers up against some rifles, eventually you're going to kill something. Really, the horse, maybe. <laughs> the big plan has to be kill the horse. Okay, I don't know why these units of archers are still willing to fight. There's nothing left. Of, there's nothing left of your army. Just give up already. I guess their their lord is still around here somewhere. Yeah, he's doing stuff. You can't say he's not still technically alive. Desperately trying to harass. Black Orcs. Alright, let's move... Since we broke their uh, their war wagons, let's move the ranged units onto Volkmar. Uh, we'll have... Honestly, those trolls are... are these trolls are going to get that job done by themselves. Let's have you guys turn around and also come after Volkmar. You... Random goblin spearmen, go after Volkmar. Spider archers, maybe get out of there. He is determined to spitefully do as much damage as he can. You guys, get that. It is a little silly, like, in how many places they have units that are hanging on desperately at the edge of survival forever. I wish any of my units ever worked that way. And to be clear, this is not like this is not just a greenskins versus um a greenskins versus empire thing. Empire units do not behave this way when they are controlled by a player. <laughs> Empire units actually have, they have a lot of leadership issues. Right. Trying to keep the, uh... Trying to keep the Grand Theogenist occupied over here, but we don't actually want to lose the Lava Spider uh, units, because we cannot get any more. Alright, so they're getting trolled... Our wagon is panicking again. You guys stay on it. Make sure it goes off the edge of the screen. <laughs> My units are considering giving up because there is one enemy unit left that is still fighting. There's like a... <laughs> there's a non-zero chance that we are actually going to see multiple units surrender in a situation where the only remaining enemy unit like actually couldn't kill them. Last him. That'll show him. Are all of the other enemy units dead? There's a red dot here. What am I looking at? Okay. You two goblin units, stay on him no matter what. You guys, all of you, also come back over. Like, this is just stupid, right? This shouldn't be happening. Let's try to stretch out the arrow line, form a nice concave over here. Put some black orcs in on this guy. Our night goblin has completely run us out of ammo, or run us out of mana, so it's unfortunate. Let me grab all of the archer units that still have ammo left. 
command group them so that we can uh, we can issue orders more effectively. These night goblin archers should not be. They're fine. They're doing just fine. He's literally the only unit left on the field. He is immune to ranged fire, apparently. He's got the uh, he's got our most elite hardcore melee units coming for him, and he's actually just going to stand there and for force the surrender of not just the units he's fighting, but multiple other units that are kind of nearby, just sort of in the area. Stuff in the pool. Alright, wizard gets clear. Here come the trolls. We li like we we actually can't deal damage to him. We're having a lot of trouble harming him. The trolls will help, right? We don't have a lot of good anti-large in this army, which is a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue. A little bit of the issue we're experiencing. I'm just standing here to provide the uh, the leadership aura. Because we we now know that our units will give up at the drop of a hat, so we gotta do whatever we can to provide them a little additional leadership. Alright, now that these guys are in, let's um let's pull a lot of these melee units back. I pretty much want the trolls. And then like we should have one unit of night goblins in. No, we shouldn't need one unit of night goblins. We have poison on him from the archers. I want to get the, the weaker units out of the way so that they're not sustaining damage from him or from the arrows. And we can let the Black Orcs with the significant armor and the two units of trolls on the way. They're coming. Do most of the actual fighting. So we are completely zeroed out. Even though we even though we hit Arcane Conduit, it didn't actually add anything last time. The, we've just we've wrung the area dry. There is no more magic in this area. Let's pull you guys back, because it'd be cool not to lose you. We are 100 percent devoted to trolls killing this guy while all of all of the ranged units in creation continue to fire at him. Also, the catapults are starting to feel a little bit frustrated with the way the battle's going. They would like it to be over. And if we just super, super fast forward. What a nightmare this has been, huh? What a what a what a frustrating episode of battles with people who just will not give up. So the uh, part of the high difficulty that we're playing on is that enemies receive bonus leadership in, in battle. Um, if you look back over the history of us playing Total War Warhammer on the channel, it has never been an issue to this degree where like units who have 100% clearly lost the battle just refuse to give up under any circumstances. It's insane that this is happening. I assume they changed something. They must have made some large significant change to the way leadership works for the AI or something. It's um, it's not making the game more difficult for us all that much, but it is making it much slower and more annoying. So, with Volkmar dead, we now have no armies in our sort of our northeastern area anymore, right? We have Toddbringer over at Wolfenburg, but that's the only Reichland army that's in the northern part of our empire at all. Uh, so we can send Wazhampa One Finger that way. We can press south with Azhag and uh, both Azhag and Oglock. Or we can, we can have Oglock respond to, um, to Toddbringer. The important thing is two armies go south, one army stays north to play defense. I think is probably our strategy. Uh, we managed to only lose two units that way. We'll get a lot of replenishment, of course. Uh, I think we're gonna... Ooh, wow. Why is Eat Captives providing such a tiny amount of replenishment when there are so many enemy bodies? I guess we didn't actually capture that many of them because we had to kill so many of them during the battle. Uh, I'm gonna take... I want 1,100 gold. It probably does not make sense for us to put together another army. Like, to replace the fourth army that we lost. So, I think the goal... We're in a fine place on gold. I think I'm going to just refresh our leadership buff. Um, it's a pretty good trait. It's a pretty great trait, honestly. It's one of the better you defeated a legendary lord traits. And I think... I think we do have him go west. 
Uh, maybe we need to take Toddbringer. Here's the thing. Maybe we need to take Toddbringer more seriously because Toddbringer might not be just Toddbringer, right? It might be the case that we have additional enemy armies backing him up. Kind of want to knock out Kappelberg, but maybe we... Maybe we need to march mode to, like, Castle Von Rocken. Yeah, I'm going to do that. We'll, we'll make this push this way. Watts Humpa will go south with Azhag. And stay... Well, hold on. Yeah, we do have to stay on our side of the of the river if we want replenishment, because we can't take Nagenhof back. Uh, which is super annoying. It's like, very frustrating that that works that way. Our movement is so bad all of the time forever. Now, his army is tiny. Nagenhof's garrison is not... Okay, so we probably we probably cannot just have Waz Humpa do this after a turn of replenishment. Or two well, it'll be two turns, I guess. Yeah, alright, let's have let's have Azhag move to I'd feel a lot more safe, like moving to here with the intention of pressing Naganov if I knew for sure there weren't any other enemy armies being built up over there. But unfortunately, all of our agents are incompetent. We could hire on some new uh, some new agents, some new goblins and stuff. Actually, we're at our cap on goblins. But we, we could get a Black Orc Big Boss out here whose job is to run around on the map and do stuff. Let's do that. Nubzub, with his plus 10% campaign line of sight, can get out here and uh, and do some scouting for us. Unfortunately, next turn. So... I will not Gelt retreated with 14 surviving units. On the Empire's, on Reichland's next turn, he's going to be strong enough that he can provide backup in a fight. So we have to be a little leery of exposing ourselves too much to that. I think I'm going to use the Underway. This is a bridge, right? Yeah, alright. I'm going to use the Underway to jump over to here. We'll approach Nagenhof from this side with Waz Humpa coming in behind us. Because I'm worried about um, I'm worried about getting outmaneuvered over here. And I think it's a I think it's a real concern. Okay. More painting. Uh nope, this is not upgrades for any units that we actually use. It's is all we have left. Oh no, we have we have this. This will help a little bit with our goblins. But mostly beyond that, we we have Savage Orc technologies left, and we don't have the ability to even hire Savage Orcs, so. That doesn't feel great. All right, over here we can we can start spending money to produce uh, value again. We don't we don't have to be saving everything for military upkeep. I know we're still negative, but we're not that negative. Um, let's. I'm actually gonna demolish this. We'll upgrade this one, and that'll provide almost as much growth as having the two of them together. And we'll build a money making building here, and then we'll turn um, we'll turn taxation back on. Uh, over here. At this point, I think we can start building up Zoyshank again. And let's see what Reichland has in store for us. I think that Oglock is probably not up to the task of fighting two Empire armies. So if Toddbringer gets reinforcements, we're going to have to be very careful about how we proceed over here. But if we can prevent them from fortifying the area, if we can break him off of Wolfenberg and then have Wolfenberg's garrison as defense, uh, I think that'll help. He's going to go and reinforce Nagenhof. His, the movement range that we were seeing for him uh, when we were looking at his army on our turn didn't have him able to make it all the way into Nagenhof, right? And he was already in march mode. Hmm. It does, it, it does feel like we are just... The, we are just being lied to about enemy movement ranges a lot, doesn't it? As something, something's going on. Uh, this patch, they did, they did a lot of good work here, and I love the green skin rework. But this patch seems to have introduced a number of like really strange, really huge bugs that uh, seem to have gotten through unfixed. Well, that is going to have to be it for us for today, and thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time tomorrow when. Hopefully we can finally push all the damn Reichlanders out of our lands and maybe uh, reclaim some of the things they've taken from us. Wouldn't that be a fun change of pace? And we'll see you then.